Loving and gracious God, I thank you for this gift, this calling you have put upon my life. Lord, I just pray that as I speak, it will not be my words, but your words. That you would be heard through me or in spite of me. Lord, I just uh, give you the thanks and I give you the praise. For you are my God and you are my friend. You are my Savior. And you are the great I am. You know, listening to all the music and stuff this morning and people speaking, I don't need to do my sermon this morning. You guys can go home now. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> well, not very good. Okay. Uh, I would ask you to stand for the reading of Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 20. Listen for and to the word of God for you and me. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quinarius was governor of Syria. Syria. And everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house in the line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in clothes and placed him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find the baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God, saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to man on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby, who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had, happened, what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. The word of God for you and me, the people of God. Thanks, Thanks, be, Thanks be to God. Oh, my goodness.
with trumpets and the blast of the ram's horn. Shout for joy before the Lord, the King. Let the sea resound in everything in it, the world and all who live in it. Let the rivers clap their hands. Let the mountains sing to, together for joy. Let them sing before the Lord, for he comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world in righteousness and the peoples with equity. Well, Merry Christmas to all of you this morning. I don't know about you, but I've, I've been waiting all year for this day. I love Christmas. I've been waiting all year for this day just to say those words, you Merry Christmas. Those two words shatter with the world around us and it brings the sacred year. These two words change our lives. These two words are words of love and redemption. These two words, God shatters the strongholds of the enemy. Without these two words, there is no happy Easter, no day of atonement. Without these two words, there is no hope or light in the darkness. So, Merry Christmas to you all. Over the past few weeks, we've been kind of talking about sacred. We have talked about the sacredness of the season that we're in, we're ready to enter, the season of Advent. And when we are expectantly waiting to celebrate the birth of Jesus as we are today, but we also wait expectantly for him to return back as he has promised. But at times we can get so busy that we lose the wonder we had and everything becomes a chore, kind of a box to be checked off on your list. We have talked about the fact that if we do not find a way to slow down, we're going to miss the best part of the season of giving that we call Advent. We are going to miss the best gift we could ever receive. The gift of God's own son in the form of a baby on a cold and silent night. When we slow down, we will see the sacredness all around us. We know that the sacredness of something should be revered and respected, but the odd runner of the season seems to get lost in the lights and the glamour of the world around us. If we want to see, if we want to feel, if we want to touch the sacred, we need to slow down our pace and just for one moment, unless we're going to miss the awe and wonder of the manger. This Advent season, we have slowed down, I think, a little bit on some moments. Even if we're just about that moment that we're here, to see what might be missed in the hustle and the bustle of the Christmas season. I pray that you and I have been able to see this season through the kaleidoscope, the display of beauty within the sacred space of Advent. I would ask that we would again stop for a moment and just breathe in the sacredness of the space that we're now in, in this sanctuary where God shows up to meet us each morning. Let's just take a moment and just breathe in the presence of God in the sacredness of this room that we are in right now. In Emmanuel, he is with us in this moment in time. I have asked us that you know we would continue to spend some time each day, even just five minutes. 
and focus on, meditate on the sacredness. Meditate upon what God has done for you in the form of a baby. He sent his very best. He sent himself incarnate to show us the way, the truth, and the life. What a gift that was, amen? What a gift. We have rediscovered that Advent is a sacred time. The time that heaven intersects with us here on earth. In the here and in the now. We have even talked about sacred people within Christmas and the adventure. You know, remember sacred people that they're set apart for God? We heard Mary and Joseph's story and discovered that they were just ordinary people, just like you and he, they were just like me, ordinary. But they showed up when God asked. They did what God wanted them to do. God did extraordinary, the most extraordinary thing through them. King incarnate because they said yes. We too have the same chance to be extraordinary. But we need to show up. That's when the incredibly extraordinary things happen. We heard the story of Mary and Elizabeth and, and how they showed up. And because they showed up, hope was birthed within that sacred space. And so here we are today, the day of Christmas that we have waited for. The day that we celebrate that sacred moment that love came down from heaven. That sacred that lived and still lives among us. What joy there was in heaven. Listen again to the angels greeting to the shepherds. Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. And what happened next? Suddenly, a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angels praising God, saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to those whom his favor rests. They knew what had happened to and for humanity. And they celebrated. Now, I'm going to go out on a limb here, okay? But it almost seems to me that they were more overjoyed, not so much about the birth of Christ, but that the birth would, what the birth would mean to you and me. Bringing us back to God. I think my favorite piece of Scripture about Christ's birth is found in John 1. And it's verses 1 through 14. Let me read this account to you. I love this piece. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the life of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only to witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone is coming into the world. He was in the world and through the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own didn't receive him yet. I think this is the part. 
To all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children not born of natural descent, nor human decision, or a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwell among us. We have seen his glory and the glory of the only one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Yet all who receive him, to those who believe in his name, <coughs> he gave the right to become children of God, children not born of natural descent nor of human decision or husband's will, but born of God. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling upon us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. This is Christmas. This is the meaning behind the sacred moments. This is the joy of the season. Emmanuel, God with us. This is the story we as Christians should be telling instead of Santa Claus and the tiny India. Although that is a good story. This is the hope beyond all hope. This is the reason for the season. This is the greatest gift of all, as we just sang a few moments ago. Love wrapped in swathed clothes, lying in a manger. The sacred among us. How can you not get excited about that? I continue to challenge you and I to take that road far different than the highway that leads to the Bethlehem stable and continue to go back as we begin the new year. I continue to dare us, to dare you and I to allow God to make something sacred out of our ordinary lives. The sacred still walks among us, living in you, and he's living in me. We need to take that light out into the world, the light that needs to be in the darkness to illuminate it, so that all can see the great light. We have much to tell for we are the beloved of God. For he loved us so much that he sent his only begotten Son, and whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have, come on, the eternal life. We have the eternal life. You are, I am, we are loved. We are not loved because of something that we can earn, or something that we can do. It just simply is. We are simply beloved, firstborn of God. The proof is the proof. God took on flesh and lived among us. That's all the proof that we need to know that we are beloved and that we are loved with an unending, Never ending love. I continue to challenge you and I to show, to slow ourselves down and to sit for the sacredness of the manger where we can see and feel the sacred space, not only in our sanctuary, but as we take our attempt to the meeting, we take our bodies, which is the dwelling place of God, out into the world that is in such need of, of a, a secret, a safe place to be and to see the sacredness in the ordinary and bring that, what we find to the world through the sacredness of our lives. Within the sacred place, the witness of what we find there in and through the danger of our risen Lord Jesus Christ. Merry Christmas. May you have a God-inspired year.
Amen.